Welcome to Beers with Rich. I'm Rich, editor under the Radar Report. How great it is to be back. This one's brought to you by Bent, Bent Spoke, Italian and Sons. So it's brought to you by Bent Spoke Brewing and Italy. Let's crack it. Mmm. Interesting. Beer's cold for a reason. Dulls the taste buds. Look, this week I want to talk lithium. That's right. Battery powered lithium. It's exciting. Kerry Packer once said that you, you only get one Allen Bond in your life. This week I'm toasting our Allen Bond, the one and only Goldman Sachs. Yep, Goldman Sachs, they were negative earlier this year providing us with a great buying opportunity. So thank you. Here's to you, Goldie. I mean, Pilbara Minerals has more than doubled in the past three months. That's worth a toast and another swig of Bent Spokes Italian and Sons. Oh, it's not bad. I'm sure many of you are feeling the same pain as I'm feeling at the moment. I mean, Pilbara Minerals is definitely you know, the exception. But I'm here to tell you that there is light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. There's light. That light's coming from a Tesla. Yep. I'm not saying buy Tesla, but I'm telling you the EV light is still shining. There's still money to be made. Industry consultants forecast that EVs are going to go from 10% of the current total vehicles produced last year to close to 40% by the end of the decade. Like, that's almost 40 million vehicles a year. That's right. And um, right now there's only enough lithium to go around for 10 million. So that puts existing producers like Pilbara in the box seat, as well as another one we like, All Chem. Like, basically when you combine that rising demand with the difficulties in producing lithium, the main component of the EV battery, you can see why the lithium price is going to stay stronger for longer. And this um, production difficulty of lithium, whether it's from brine or, or rock, was what Goldman Sachs underestimated. New lithium proje projects are hard to come by. But, you know, in the same breath, the big strength of being under the radar or under the radar report is that we can look through these short-term difficulties because our orientation isn't to the institutions, it's to the individuals. So that means that individuals don't have to report their portfolio performance every three months so they can wear more pain than, than you know portfolio managers can. So while they Goldman's might have been right in saying, yep, there's a bit of an oversupply problem and, you know, lithium's you know, the lithium price isn't going anywhere. They might have been right in the short term, but those fund managers that bailed out provided a buying opportunity for the private clients of this world or for the, the individual investors of this world. And that's who, who you know, we're seeing this, this sort of opportunity time and time again. That's what's happening in the broader market, okay? You know, there's been a bit of a sell-off about 13% in the past six months, but the small caps have been hit pretty hard and that's because institutions have been getting out. I mean we're seeing this with basically the spreads, the bid offer spread. So that's the difference between you know what people are prepared to buy on the bid and what they're prepared to sell. So it's analogous to what's happening in the property market where basically your clearance rates falling, you know, which is evidence that buyers and sellers have different views on valuation. I mean what I'm saying right now, the bottom line is that it's a buyer's market. So don't be chasing and there's always buying opportunities around the corner. And that's our job is to find those buying opportunities. So we're finding a lot of them. So back to our lithium, our lithium um, analysis. And recently we've been covering the, the sector in this week's issue and, and coming up in future issues. But all chem like has been one that we've been covering for quite a while previously. It was called um, Oracobra, then they merged with Galaxy um, Resources or Minerals. And now they've got a lot of management expertise. So they've been through a lot of problems, both in Argentina, in the brines, and also in the hard rock in Galaxy. 
So Mount Catlin. So basically, we have confidence that this company's new project, the Sal de Vida, can be ramped up fairly quickly. Another key point is that basically these companies have real financial strength. I mean, they didn't have to raise equity to finance this growth. So right now, if you see people raising equity, it's a sign of weakness. Like people, it's distressed times. People are raising equity only when they absolutely have to. And these guys didn't have to. And, and that's why as a minority shareholder, you can really see your share price go up. Speaking of financial strength, Pilbara Minerals. I mean, this company on its balance sheet, $700 million plus of net cash. It's producing $800 million in operating earnings, EBIT, EBITDA. And its bottom line, even more important, $562 million. And these are hard numbers. Like there's a, a lot of companies these days, especially in mining, they talk about EBITDA, they talk about this, they, you know, adjusted, adjusted here. It, there's so many adjusted that it, it renders that number meaningless. But this company basically has a lot of strength because they've got an asset on, this, on the cheap. They bought Altura, Altura's lithium um, plant. Uh, at Pilgura in, in WA on the cheap because it was a distressed seller. Altura had this debt hanging over its head like Damocles' sword. Basically, it was like the equivalent of saying, you know, getting a mortgage in the second year, the bank saying, oh, you have to pay back the principal. So they were stuffed. In comes, um, you know, Pilbara Minerals because they've got financial strength. That's what financial strength can buy you. And that's what we're looking for every day. We're looking for taking advantage of forced sellers. I mean, that's what's happening at the moment. And we're going to come up with more and more opportunities, um, both in lithium stocks and elsewhere. I mean, that's that's a promise. So let's let's take a deep dive on this Italian beer. Well, Bent Spoke Italian and Sons. Bent Spoke, I keep brewing. Regina. Well, Elizabeth Regina. I don't know. Well, it's crisp. The best that can be said. Where's this brewer from? Bentsbroke. Bentsbroke. Canberra. Well, exotic Braddon in the ACT. Unfortunately, glossed over in many a tourist brochure. You heard it first under the radar. See you next week.